your wish is granted. Because sometimes the Lord does not fulfill the wish of the devotees. Knowing well that the wish is not beneficial for progress and devotion. So sometimes not only he does not fulfill the wish of the devotee, but he acts contrary and create trouble for the devotee. He says that he can also take away the property, wealth, relatives. He can make you completely frustrated in your material life. So that you have no other shelter but him. So, then everybody leaves such a person and no anybody, then no partner may find another person. So, his ways are mysterious. Narada Muni, he wanted a beautiful form so that he could marry the those girls who are attracted by some handsome man. So he wanted, he went to the Lord and said, please give me a beautiful form. And he asked, what do you want to do? And he said, I'm going to participate in this one mother. The ceremony was being performed by the king, princess, where she was going to select a suitable husband for herself. And all the princes were invited. So he has gone there before <coughs> and when he visited this king's palace, the king asked him that, how are you and he received him nicely and he said, well I have a young daughter and can you read his palm? People are very much interested in palm reading. Tell me if she will get a good husband. So Narada is a devotee, he is a knowledgeable person, he knows so many things, he has a whole list of things to know, so he also knows Thomas too. So he saw the hand of this girl and he was amazed. Because according to the lines on the hand, it appeared that the person who is going to marry her will be as good as Vishnu. He will be powerful, he will have all good qualities, famous. So when he saw that, he thought, why not I marry her? Because he didn't tell this to the king. He was telling other things, oh, she will have a nice husband, and she will live very happily, and no any shortage in her life. So all this he was speaking good things about her and she is well behaved and she had a long life. And she will be worshipped by even great people after marriage. And the thing which he was not telling is that the person who marries he will have all wonderful qualities and very fortunate. And when he marries her, he will be most fortunate. So the Narada Muni, within his own mind, he desired that I should marry her. My leaves as a chance. Because this was a very rare hand. He has those who do palmistry, he has seen so many hands. So he has seen so many hands, but this was most extraordinary. I have never seen anybody who done a hand like this. So then he wanted to leave from there. Of course, he knew that if he is like this, dressed all this matted hair, this princess is not going to marry him. Moreover, everybody knows Narada is a brahmachari, he is a sage. He doesn't have a house, he does not even have an ashram, he was cursed by Daksha. 
wander here and there in a little bit of one place so who will marry me? Unless somebody is really infatuated with me. So he thought that if somebody has to be really infatuated by me, I have to have a very beautiful body. So he went to Lord Vishnu and he said, Lord Vishnu received him. He dressed him and said, you are my great devotee, what do you want? So he says, usually I have never asked you anything, but today I have a request. He says, ask him. He says, give me the best beautiful form. So Lord Vishnu asked, why, why, what do you want to do with that? He says, please don't ask that. Because this is a secret, he didn't want to tell anybody. He tells him when he will also come. <laughs> and he didn't want a competitor. <coughs> so the Lord said, okay, no problem, I will do everything for you. So he said, you have the most beautiful form. And he gave him the form of a monkey. You see how monkeys they look so ugly? Even their rest of the body is not so bad, but if you look at their face, they really, there is no beauty on monkey's face. <laughs> they look quite old and wrinkles. So in here, not only he is thinking that he got a nice, the body was nice, but he didn't know the face. So, usually when you go out somewhere, you look in the mirror. Right? That I'm going out, so let me see how I look, especially the face. So, but he was so convinced that there is no need to look in the mirror. I am the most handsome guy. So, he went around. So, in Sanskrit, there is a word called Bandar. In Hindi called Bandar and in Hindi it is called Sundar. So instead of Sundar he became Bandar. So he went there and he was very sure that he is the one who will be selected. And when he went, because there was a big theater and where all the princes came and they sat and the princess will come with a garland and look around and do whatever she likes, you put the garland in the night and that is the person who is chosen. So now the side, right, in the first row there was no space, he was like in the second row sitting. And at that time two associates of Lord Shiva, they also came and sat next to him because they just wanted to make fun of him. So they were looking at each other and saying, let's see. And Narada was thinking that they are appreciating his beauty. <laughs> so let's see, let's see this guy. And then they were smiling, so they thought that they were very happy by seeing his beauty. But they were sarcastic. And everybody was like, what is he doing here? This monkey fell. Huh? So when the princess came, she, she looked and when she saw this fellow, she completely avoided him. Says, Who is this ugly fellow sitting here? Dressed nicely but monkey face. So now Narada thought that maybe she has not noticed me, so he was even going like this. <laughs> to see his face. And everybody was laughing. <laughs> what is this fool guy doing? <laughs> and these these two people were standing and they were doing like this behind me. <laughs> then you see this guy. So Narada was very desperate. But she did not pay any attention, she avoided him. And then she chose somebody, but actually Lord Vishnu himself came and the prince. And then 
So let one these two people they told him that why don't you go and see your face in the mirror? Because he was very dejected. He did not expect this. He was it's like when you have hopes and then hope is not fulfilled, then you feel very depressed. And more intense is your hope, more deeply you will be depressed. So he did not have any like thought in his mind that he would not win this girl. And now he was a complete failure, so much that the girl did not even look at him. So when he saw his face, they actually brought a mirror and showed him that you see. And when he saw that he is a monkey, then he was totally furious. He cursed these two fellows to become a demon because they were making fun of him. Because you can point somebody's mistake. To correct it and you can also point somebody's mistake to enjoy it. So that's what they were doing, they were enjoying his ugliness. Not that they are saying that he is an ugly being, he has no scope. They better find some other place, go to the forest and look for some female monkey if they are really interested. <laughs> And at that time, Lord Vishnu, he was going in the chariot with the king, and now he was in his original form. And Narada also came in his original form. So when you saw him going, then he was still angry, and you know that anger, in anger you lose your intelligence. And Krishna says, Samrat Samjayate Kama, Kama Krod Hodhijayate. By association, by seeing things you become attached and that's what happened to Narada. He saw this girl and so on and he became attached. And when his desire was not fulfilled then he was angry. And Krodhat Bhavati Samuha, when you are angry you are bewildered. This means all those signs of discrimination, what is proper and what is improper. Samuha Smriti Krodhana Smriti Hansar Buddhina So this is what happened to him. He is the devotee of Vishnu, but he cursed him that as I suffer, he will also suffer. He suffers in your life. That's why he came as Lord Ramachandra. His wife was kidnapped and the monkeys helped him. So, the story is that when Lord knows that Fulfilling a particular desire is not beneficial for the devotee, he does not do that. He does not fulfill that. And he not that he always. Otherwise, he says in Bhagavatam that whatever my devotee wants, even if he wants <coughs> Sarsti, Sayuja, anything. So now they were worried, this Deva, that maybe he will not fulfill our desire. And when you are attached to your desires, you don't care for something higher. You want your desire to be fulfilled. Sometimes you even know that it is not really appropriate. Yet this is what attachment means, and attachment pollutes your intelligence. You cannot discriminate properly, you cannot make decisions properly. It is later on when the event has passed, then you will repent. Because now that covering is gone. And when you are covered because of attachment, then it's very difficult to see the reality. So they were the most like that. So they are saying, Trivhuvana Atma Bhavan Trivikrama Trinayana Triloka Mano Harani Bhava Tavevi vibhuteyo diti, diti jadanujada yascha api, 
तेषाम अनुक्रम समयोयमिति स्वात्माया सुरनर मृग मिश्रित जलचरा कृति भी यथा परार्थ परार्थ दंड दंड धर्म धर्म पर एवं एनम अपि भगवन जही वास्त्रम इत्यादि मन्ने से सुपस्त देव से नटीवर त्रिभुवन भव त्रिभुवन आत्मा भवन नटीवर द रेजिडेंस फॉर एवरीबॉडी इन दिस त्रिलोकस and you are Trivikrama, the other one who measured this universe by three steps. And Trinayana, the three eyes, Triloka Manohara, your beauty is supreme in the Trilokas, is experienced by the devotees. And Taveva Vibhoteva says that all these sons of Diti who are called Dathyas and Dhanavas who are sons of Dhanu and your wives of Kashyapa. So they are all your Vibhuti. So they are also manifestation of Lord's Shakti. So he says that this is not the time for them to be supreme. So please kill this Vrataswata created by Krishna. Bhagavan Jai Krishna. So they are straightforward. Not missing any words. They are being manyasa. So if you think that you are happy with this, you want to fulfill our wish, then please do not. So Sri Vishnu Chakrati says, Pad Bhakti Sumadhyay Sakamatvad Vayame Vati Nikrishta Iti Dhyoti Amke Prasputam Vidyapya He says among your devotees, there are two types of devotees, those who are Sakam and those who are Niskam. So Sakam means those who have some material motive, they approach the Lord for something material, as Krishna says, Chakravidha Bhavan Kevam Vinasu. Arpa Jibhyasu Arthati Jnani Cha Bhartasu So there are Jnanis who know that the Lord should be worshipped and they worship only for that and then there are other three types Arthi Jibhyasu and Arthi Jibhyasu and Arthi Jibhyasu They want some wealth or solve some problem or even some knowledge So they are also Kaam Bhaktas so he says that among Sakam Bhaktas, we are the worst, we are the lowest. And it is very interesting that people sometimes they say this, I am the most fallen servant, I am the most lowly servant, right? Then I am. Now the question is that if you are most fallen, why not become a little up? So do you want to remain fallen or do you want to uplift yourself? So they are saying we are the most nikrishta, we are the most lowly and we want to remain like this. That's why they are asking for it. And if you are most fallen and you know it, then try to uplift yourself. Why are you asking still for the material things? At least ask for pure devotion. If you are seeing the Lord and He is pleased with you, then ask so that you don't remain fallen. So, this is some kind of hypocrisy or false humility. So, therefore, they are saying that we are most fallen, they are indicating this, Prasthukam Vidyata Yanti, and then they are showing why. He says, Trubhuvana Atma Bhavnam Yasya Tvat Bhakta Devan Shadeva Yatra Stitva Tvam Sevanta. So he says that this is Trivona, both both, Swarna, Trivona, Atma Bhavnam. This is the place where your devotees are existing. And the Devas also, and the Tamil Devas. So they are performing service to you. Tadidam Asura Akrantam Abhuti Pita. So what they are saying is that at present, 
This has become overpowered by the Asuras. So, the Asuras are occupying the kingdom of Indra. Trivir Vikramesh Trin Loka Nayashi. And then they say you are Trivikram. So, it is overpowered by Asuras, but you have the power to remove them or defeat them. That's why they are calling him Trivikram. Because you control all the three lokas by your potency. Yadeva Trubhuvanam Vamana Utare Tribhireva Padai Pratibriya Malaya Sakasha Aniya Asmabhyam Dasya Sudhi He says that this time in Vamana Utare you will control the three worlds by your three steps and then give the kingdom of heaven to us by taking it away from Bali. So like that you do it now, that is implied. That's why they are using these words. As you do in case of Bali, because Bali is also thrown away Indra. That's why Lord has to come and to Indra, Indra's younger brother, to help. Nanu Parahinsam Samudhisya Maam Yadadve Atrahu So Lord, I will be raising an objection that you are worshipping me only to engage in some violence so that I become violent to kill others. This is your purpose. Which means that that is very selfish. For your sake I should kill someone. So then they say, Tat Taveli Vibhuteo, Yadiyapi Tadapi Tesham Uttam Sanyu Nasa. They are saying that these are not some other people, this is all your will. Devas, Dhanavas, Asuras, everybody is your will. In the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that among Asuras and Prahlad. So Asuras are also his Vibhuti. So, Deva Namasmi Vasavaha, so Indra Amma Devas, Prada Namasmi Dakya Namma, Prada Namma Dakya. So, all is Vibhuti. So, he said, no, we are not asking you to kill somebody. He said, so, we are just saying that you have to get put your other Vibhuti down and put us up. And then they say, why is that? He says, because Tesham Ukram Samayo Nayam Because it is not the time for him to be supreme now. So, just as we know that there is Satyuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapar Yuga, Yuga. So, in different Yugas, different Gunas become prominent. In Satyuga, Sattva is prominent. Jai Kale to Sattvas. Described in the same Shikanti. In dialogue, Shikanti. Kalikshit that sometimes the Sattva, when the Sattva is prominent, then the Devatas are prominent. And when Rajas and Tamas come out, then the Suras, Rakshas, and they come in power. So they are informing him that this is not your time for them. So you please create a balance. That will happen later on. So Tasmat He Danda Dhara Purvam Yatha Dandam Dadhartha Eva Madhunapu Kup Samipu Kale Eva. So they are calling him as Danda Dhara. Danda means the rod of chastisement. The Lord is having weapons in his hand for chastising, correcting, controlling the unrighteous people. So he says that you are the Dandadara, therefore we request you to use it now. Yes, to subdue the Asura, Vritrasura. So therefore they say that 
cluster node behind. So in case he does not know which asura, he will say direct with cluster. So asmakam the next they say asmakam tavakanam tavnatanam tatatapamaha tavacharana nilam yugala dhyanam vadhya nivadanam swalinga vibrena atma sat kutanam anukampana ranjita vishada anchara shishira smita uloke vigalita madhura mukhara samrita kalaya chantastapam anad so they are really pressing. You can see how they are very persistent. It's a very nice technique. First they glorified him, then they slowly revealed what they want. Now again saying why he has to go. He says Asmakam Tavakanam Tavnatanam. He says, we actually belong to you. And we are surrendered to you. You are Tata, Tatama. You are our, our father. You are our grandfather. And Tau Charana Nila Nalina Yugala Dhyana Anubad Hridaya Nigadana. He says that we are bound, our heart is bound to your lotus feet through meditation. And swelling the river and in Atma Sat Pratana, you have manifested your form in front of us and we are completely absorbed in your benefit. Anukampa Anuranjita, Vishadha Vichuda Sishira Smita, you are souring your blessings on us with this beautiful smile, which is like flowers. So we feel blessed. Vigalita Madhura Mukhara Samrita Kalaya. So he says that it deserves, behooves you that you remove our disturbance from our heart by the drops of nectar coming out from your sweet face. Sweet Please say yes, I will do it. Means they are saying that there is, we don't want to hear no. We don't want to take, like say, I don't want to take no for an answer. So that's what they are indicating that this nectar flowing. Vigaleta Madhura Mukhara Samarita Kalaya Chananta Stasana. Anagha, you are anagha, you are sinless. And therefore, quell the burning in our heart because they are suffering inside. They have been thrown away from their weapons. They were all swallowed by Mithrasura and they had no place to go. Even Mithrasura was huge wherever they see, they only see him. So the commentary Evam Stutva Kripav Loka Madhura Madhuram Ashwash so after praying to him like this, they are requesting him to bless them with the nectar of assurance, the speech in the form of assurance. Aswas Vag Amrita. So what means speech and aswas means assurance. That they are saying that please assure us that what we are asking. Say and it's enough for us. So this is the prayer. And Mukha Chandra Nishita Madhuro Mukha Shakti Avak Seva Amrit Kala. So this Amrit Kala or the drops of nectar is nothing but the speech which flows from the beautiful water space of the world. So this is the request. So you see, Lord has a very troublesome situation. One side, he has appeared to the devas, and they are 
houses or the, his devotees. Obviously, Indra is his very bhuti. He is the one who installs him and protects him. As we read, Prithu Maharaj was performing yagya, and Indra was still in the house. The Lord appeared there and he asked Prithu to stop. He actually favored Indra. He did not chastise Indra, but Indra also appeared from him. So this is one side, but on the other side is Vritrasura, who is also a devotee. So now they are asking him to kill the devotee. So he is in a fix. So it's called and Vritrasura is a better devotee, he is a great devotee of the Lord. And now they say that he killed him. They directly said, Vastram Jahi killed this Vritrasura. So that's why they are saying that, because they know that he may say no. So they are saying that, please, please, we want to hear this. Asura's statement coming out from the mouth like nectar flowing. And you have already blessed us by your physical presence. And they say that how there's usually devotees will not speak like this. He says that our hearts they are bound to your feet to meditation. So if their hearts are bound to the feet of the Lord through meditation, why do they need this kingdom? They, they are the one who said earlier that anyone who tastes even one drop of this love of the Lord, then he loses all interest in anything material. Okay? So that this material pleasure looks is not even just one drop, it is only a semblance not even real. They are the same people. So they know it and yet they are asking for it. And they are saying we are completely fixed in your heart and now we please for this. So Athar Bhagavan's Tavasmadhir akila jagadu utpatti sthiti laya nimittaya man divya maya vinodasya sakal jiva nikaya naam antar hridesu bahira picha brahm pratyag atma svarupena pradhan rupena cha yathā desa kāla dehra avasthāna ukshesham tadu pādāna upalambhaka tayānu bhauta sarva pratyaya sākshina Akasharirasya sakshat parabrahma paramatma kiya nehava arthrusya chari vyapani nesya nispurling adi vilya hiranya vilyasa So when they are saying that actually what is the use of saying anything to you? You are Swam Supreme Lord you are only seen and how is that we can speak about your glories? Just as a spark cannot illuminate the sun, a little spark has no power to illuminate the sun. So it's so effulgent that you will not even see the spark. So they are saying that we have no power to even glorify you. We don't have the power to know your limits. You are Parabrahma, you are Paramatma. So all these things they are saying. So it is not possible for us to actually request you anything. Because we do not even know what is good for us and what is bad for us. Yet we want that to kill this with us. So what, what is the need to say to you all this? Because you already know. Because you are the creator of the universe. And you are 
में स्थित है लय निमित्ताय मान दिव्य माया सो इस यू आर प्लेइंग विद योर माया योर इटर्नल पोटेंसी दिस इज ऑल अ प्ले फॉर यू एंड यू नो एवरीथिंग बिकॉज़ इफ यू आर द क्रिएटर देन यू नो यू नो क्रिएट समथिंग यू नो व्हाट गोइंग इनसाइड दैट वी आर आल्सो होल्डिंग इट सो देयर इज नो नीड फॉर अस टू टेल यू व्हाट यू शुड डू Yet we have told, and we want that you take care of this. So you you are situated in the heart of everybody. Therefore, you know what is inside the heart. And just as the wind flows everywhere, like that we pervade everything. And not only that you are inside, but you are also outside. Everywhere. so you are the cause of everything whatever exists in this universe anywhere in any time and all situations all forms they have come from you and you are the one who are illuminating them and experiencing them so like krishna says in bhagavad gita that everywhere are my hands and my eyes and everywhere so i am going to so the lord is everywhere so he is he is the witness of everything so the father said that you are the sakshi of all the vrittis he spoke about the vrittis right so all the vrittis are known to him even those which we do not know he knows so therefore they are saying that you know what is in our heart you don't have to repeat it again and again so this do the need for tav tvai yan arth visheshao vigyapani aiti he says what is the use of informing you about anything प्रत्येक आत्मा यू आर अंतरियाम यू आर द इमिनेंट बीइंग द सुप्रीम सोल तद्रूपेण बहिरपि विशेषु देन यू आल्सो एग्जिस्ट आउटसाइड ऑफ प्रधान सो प्रधान इज द माया द प्रकृति फ्रॉम व्हिच ऑल द मैटेरियल एलिमेंट्स कम इंद्रियादिकम एंड आल्सो द सेंसेस तद्रूपेण देशस्य कालस्य देहस्य अवस्थान विशेषु सो ऑल द टाइम and the place and the various situations of the body balya there so it's a childhood youth mid life old age tani anatikram ni anubhav so you will experience everything you know all about these things tesham devadi jeev nikaya nam upadan taya pranatya upalam bhaktaya prakash karte vidyata vidyapan You are the ingredient for everything. The Lord is the cause, both the material cause as well as the present cause. And you are also the prakashaka. Means everything is functioning because of the presence of God, and we also know things only because of His presence. Otherwise, we will not know. So, Gunaira Anviyate Bhavan. सीएन चगुनो विदन द प्रेयर एंड द देवस सो ऑल द गुणाज गुणाज मींस द सेंसेस द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स दे आर ऑल इल्यूमिनेटेड बाय हिम मींस इट इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ हिज प्रेजेंस दैट दे फंक्शन सो ऑल द वी वी नो दैट इन द बॉडी देयर इज आत्मा एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द आत्मा द सेंसेस आर वर्किंग but the atma also is not independent the lord is called swa ashra ashra he is his own shelter he is not dependent on any one else and therefore he is the illuminator so yasya bhasha sarvam vidam bhavati 
So we have taken shelter of the shade of your lotus feet and that shade removes all sufferings. You are the Param Guru, you are the teacher. Bhagavata, Tadu, Kalpaya, Asmatam. So please, Kalpaya means now do what we have asked. It is only by your grace that we have come to you because without your grace it is not possible. So, we are also referring you to a Param Guru, Supreme Teacher, which means that in case you don't want to do it yourself, then give us some instruction how to get out of this problem. Guidance, consultancy. Ateva sarvagyatva deva yam yat kamena yasya kamena charana padma chaya mukshadita svayam payayeva prapita. So he said that you are Sarvagya, you know very well. And it is only by your grace that we have been brought to your feet. Tatkaryam Swameva Kalpi. So now we complete that act. So this is actually Lord's pastime. He does that. He, he is the one who creates the Asuras. He is the one who puts them the Deva into trouble. The devas come to him, they pray to him, and he gives them a solution. <coughs> so that's how it is. And <coughs> in between he gives instructions. That is the basic purpose. So just as you read Sanskrit plays, 
then the main purpose is not entertainment. Usually we watch plays or movies for entertainment. But the real purpose of this play is at least in Sanskrit, it's not entertainment, but to have instructions. Rama Devat Bhakti you have to Rama Nadeva. You should behave like Lord Ramachandra and not like Rama. Rama. Not like the demon Rama. This is the basic principle of the place written in Sanskrit. This is the formula. And then to give this instruction in the right place so that teaching through entertainment. When people don't want to study directly, then we teach them by engaging them. Like children, they don't want to learn, so we devise some techniques some games. So these games they like to play, but the idea is also that through these games they learn something. So Lord also does that. He does his Leela, his play. And that Leela is always full of instructions. So that we learn something from him. So here also he, he does that. So he is called Param Guru, he is the supreme teacher. Guru means teacher. So he knows how to instruct. And since people in general do not have interest in learning philosophy, so then he does not do it. Yadrasi Kriyate Krida, Tatsutva Tatparo Bhave. Lord performs Krida, Krida is the word for Krida play. That by hearing that you become devoted to him. So because devotion is the ultimate essence. So the purpose of all these descriptions, all these stories is so that we come to take shelter of the Lord and become devoted to him. That is the idea behind these stories. So sometimes the stories are to be followed as an ideal and sometimes the story is telling not to do such a thing. Both types. Because instruction is a two type. You do it and you avoid it. So, in case of Devas, we are being told that we should not pray like this. And you will see now when the Lord speaks what he will say. So, we have to learn what, what to ask for, what to pray for, or what to plan for and what not to plan for. That's one of the both types. So he says that the very reason for which you have brought us to your lotus feet is fulfilled that Tathkariyam, Swamyeva, Kalpa, Sampadeva, Chayam, Kidrishim, Ukshvitanam, Bhaktanam, Parishram, Ukshvam. So he says because the shade of your lotus feet, it removes the fatigue of those who take shelter. So, especially in India when it is summer time, it's very hot. And if you work in the hot and you go and sit down in the cool shade of a tree, you feel relief. So, Lord's feet are compared to like that Parmapalas, like the lotus flower is also considered as cooling, and the lotus leaves are cooling. So this simile is given to that, the metaphor is used to indicate that. So these are the prayers now. After this we will read that. The Lord says, the Lord will speak and give them solution. We will do tomorrow. If there is any question, yes.
performance is needed. Mm -hmm. As an entertainment for those who do not want to study philosophy. He also uses devotees. He uses his own liberated eternal associates to enact the different goals. Yeah. On both sides, the demons and the devotees or just no, he's personally come first. It's like Jayam, we are also his devotees. Because who else can fight for me? So it's not that Jayam and Vijay are the only ones, they are an exception. It's like when he comes, with, now when he fights with Ravana, he has all these demons, all the associates of Ravana. And then, it is what I described, that those who participate with him, they are part of the entourage. It's like they have a drama party. So when they go and perform some drama somewhere, it's not that the good guys belong to their party and the bad guys they are going to pick up from the crowd. Because if they pick up from the crowd, they will not know how to act. Obviously, they will not know. So he has but that would mean that the Lord creates bad things well how he will please me you know, he creates evil. That's what he said. And this Asurada also, and Dhanujara also, and the Buddha. You can read this in San Franco. This is what he raised. He is giving power to them also. But from where their power comes? Like in other religions, they invent the devil. For everything that is you know, evil and bad, it's all the devil's doing. And God is like not involved in it. It sets, like, sets the Vedic concept really yeah, so the, apart from the... The Vedic concept is very clear that there is only one ultimate reality. This is a very important concept. Although we accept devotees and in Advait one they have only one. But our becomes ultimate reality is one, but in one there is variety, but reality is only one. There is no other there are no two independent realities. Otherwise this will will be independent of love. Therefore, when it is described, it said that Dharma is the chest of the Lord and Anarma is the backside. So, Maya remains on his backside. But Maya is also the center. Apashyat Kursham Poonam, Maya and Chakala Pasham. Yasdev sat in the Samadhi, but Yoga remains in the Samadhi, Pranjita Yamada. He sat in the Samadhi, he saw the Lord, he also saw Maya. Maya was taking shelter of the Lord, but he was a partial, he was a little far away. So Maya is not independent. People say, Mama Maya, that is my Maya. Then you could say the purpose of his teaching, both through the Leela and the philosophy, is to enable the Chiva to approach him or find his way 